can't believe I'm going to say this, but I went back in time. <laughs> oh, no. I know. It's a, play, it's a terrible uh, pun. I uh, hate that. <laughs> to play a uh, one times quantum break. I've got some some footage here, which I just grabbed. Came from, if I'm not mistaken, 2015? It's eight years old, going on nine years old, if I'm not mistaken. The quantum break came out in 2016, sure. It's Oh, yeah, that does make sense, yeah. That does so, sense. for those of you who do not know, quantum break is what Remedy made before Alan Wake 2 and before Control. Uh, quantum break came out after the original Alan Wake. Um, and... In its time, it was positioned as a, you know, this gorgeous looking game with time bending mechanics, uh, well, time bending abilities in the combat. And interestingly, live action. Um, Quantum mm -hmm. Break features four uh, fully fledged TV episodes with, you know, actors and actresses doing things um, which pop up between each chapter in the game. So it's very, very interesting that um, Remedy. Like, if you've if you've played Alan Wake and gone, wow, amazing for them to experiment with live action. It's like, no, like they've they've done it plenty now. Um, mm. I don't know this game. It's it's funny. It's the one thing I'm missing from my my remedy uh, repertoire of, of I've played everything else and I thought, well, shit, why did I miss Quantum Break? I, j I just kind of never got around to it. So I think because it was an Xbox exclusive at the time, didn't yeah. really pick it up on PC. Um, and I played it, and I, I've, I enjoyed it, but it's definitely, it's funny because you can see how much Remedy's improved. Like, I think there are flaws with this game, and um, there's things I don't like about it, but I can look at it and go, man, I see how this led to Control. Like, Control yes. being the follow-up to this, it's like they looked at Quantum Break and thought, well, we'll just do it a lot better <laughs> in, yeah. in our, our next game. Um, do you remember? It's kind of insane just looking at this footage. How good this game still looks! It still like, looks really good. The amount of stuff going on on screen at any given time, while you're like slow mo moving through yes. the world, and the the like ground around you is rippling up, and it just it looks it's a, fantastic. It's a technical marvel. Like I don't know how this yeah. ran on <laughs> an Xbox One back in the day. Not at sixty frames per second. Not at yeah. only that I much. Can't, can't yeah. imagine that. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because this definitely it, it's the precursor to control um yeah i think I in so many ways though it's like in tone in sort of gameplay even was way more like action based with yes. this you know these powers and control i think feels way more loose like mm. this is very much like a cover shooter in a sense yeah. And control is like, no, 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 no. Cover doesn't make sense at all. You can throw shit around the room. So you mm. can obviously just run around the room. So it's just a natural evolution, I think, also considering the characters that they have in each of the games. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's cool. I, like you said, they're experimenting with live action here in a way that control expands upon and then Alan Way completely goes mm. all in on, I think. Yeah. Um, but you you had issues with the episodes because they're like not hosted online anymore yeah it's, it's 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 weird because so i played the uh game pass version so i.e the yes. microsoft version and this game is riddled with so many issues like i it's it's actually shocked me in eight to nine years later the, there's like a visual bug that happens in certain scenes where I've, i'm sure i've got footage of it somewhere but i won't dig it up it's it's kind of weird to explain, but light, light leaks through from its light source and it just kind of dominates the whole scene, uh -huh. if that makes sense. Oh, weird. To the point yeah. where if you're looking in a certain direction, there's a light source that you actually can't see. It's like blinding. <laughs> and, uh, so it's and like bleeding through a wall or something it's like bleeding that? It's bleeding through walls and stuff. And it's just uh. weird. And I think, shit, if I'd played this game, if I'd paid money for this eight years ago and this is what happened and they just never fixed it i would be pissed <laughs> I'd be yeah i think i think it was very clear early on that this game was not hitting in the way microsoft or remedy would have liked and i don't think but, support on this but appa for apparently the, the steam version is a lot better and i, I don't know why uh, like i don't know it came out way later but but still like what what constitutes two different versions one for steam one for microsoft surely they would distribute the same version on both platforms no they, they're but, different i mean 
I, I get what you mean. Yeah, they, they're different packages ultimately. But yeah, why yeah. if you'd release a Steam version, not just update the Microsoft one? I don't know. Yeah. It's wild. And then like you mentioned, the episodic uh, content that happens, not embedded into the game. <clears throat> you mentioned, um, oh, hey, there's a pack you can download. Uh, so let, let me just give you context for that. So like I said, between each chapter, there's an actual TV episode. Um, but yeah. those are being hosted on a server, which is no longer up anymore. So every time I finished an episode, it'd be like, cool. Uh, like, you know, we're going to show you the TV channel. Oh no, the server's unavailable. Do you want to skip and go to the next chapter? I'm like, well, thank God. I know that this game's TV shows are like kind of pivotal and important. You know what the hell's going on. Mm. So I had to watch them on YouTube. Um, and it's just interesting because the, the TV pack you mentioned, it's like it exists only on Xbox. You can download the episodes for offline viewing. Only I really thought Xbox it was on PC as well. I didn't. I assume then that's the same for the Steam version because I highly uh, doubt that there's just this random server that only the Steam version can. But apparently the Steam version, the videos are there. Like, I don't know. I what? can either confirm nor the deny fuck? that, but okay. that, that baffles me. That's why I'm like, this is Microsoft on... is doing this game so dirty. I, I'm like, like, this is on Game Pass. Like, how has it yeah. been like this for eight to nine years? Like, no wonder if Quantum Break's been swept under the rug, which, yeah. which is a shame because like, it's it's got things I don't like about it, but it is still a very good remedy game. Like, if mm. you if you want a a game that has a story that makes you <laughs> makes you rack your brain over time travel and how things fit into place and how things play out narratively, like Quantum Break is it. It's got a a pretty fascinating story of you know what happens when you go back in time and try change events and you know mm -hmm. go into the future and whatever the whole the whole butterfly effect exactly really explored. Like, yeah. can you actually change things yes or no and it, it just explores that um and it's just yeah. it's a it's an interesting world um like it, it kind of makes me sad you've said to me that remedy i've said this does not exist in the the yeah. you know, shared universe it's a, it's a bummer it's but a real bummer I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they do make it fit like yeah, uh, they they could they, they could very easily at one point just yeah. retcon that that and you know it would make sense because like you've got so many characters overlapping in here. I mean, you've got Lance Reddick who was meant to appear as uh, Wallendall in Alan Wake Two, mm. and I feel like him there would be like the connective tissue between Alan Wake's world and Quantum Breaks, just because of the nature of who Wallendall Dor yes. is. And like how that could make sense within the context of who Lance Reddick's character is in Quantum Break. Yeah. So you've also got Courtney Hope in, Qu yes. in Quantum Break before <laughs> Which, she appeared as... For, for the um, longest time, I was like, she looks so familiar. Who is this? And I, was like, <laughs> did you know? I was like, oh, <laughs> you moron. <laughs> yeah, the lead actor in oh, Control. In Control, um, yeah. Jesse, Jesse Faden. Fagan? Faden. Faden, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah so it, it just shows like remedy had all these ideas and had the people in mind for this back then i think i think they they were very savvy from a business perspective to latch onto microsoft who at the time was like very into this idea of tv i mean quantum break was announced with the xbox one i specifically mm. recall they because everyone gave xbox shit for like oh they only spoke about tv but like they put up a splash screen during that initial presentation that had quantum break there and it was like mm. from the creators of max Payne, and it was this like weird game plus series sort of mm. experiment and yeah you know a lot of people brush it off because they're like oh, okay this is just another way for them to do tv series and i think sam lake or whoever at remedy were like yeah kind of but we also want to experiment with this medium and people give shit to quantum break for its for its series feeling very um, like not important in the grand scheme of things and the choices that you make. So the idea that you were affecting a TV series was nothing more than like you are choosing which episode to watch. Smoke and mirrors. But yeah. It, yeah, but it gave Remedy a, a chance to be like, okay, cool. Maybe choice isn't the correct thing when it comes to integrating live action. What if we just mm. keep the live action but integrate it into the storytelling Mm. as a, a whole new medium and i think control and alan wake show that, that is so. the correct path yeah. alan wake's a more modern example of blending those two together so well like yeah. truly it's in, in an incredible way it's yeah. so like stuff i've never seen in games before how they've done it where you 
you're playing Alan Wake and then just on the screen is like Alex Casey, actual Sam Lake acting yeah. out the scene or, or just looking at the camera in a moody, <laughs> moody points of view. And I think what, what makes that approach so fascinating to me is that it's not something that you'll be like, oh, okay, we'll see this in every game from now on because it's mm. like the popular thing. It's like, no, it only makes sense within the context of their games because of the mm. story they're telling. Yeah. This idea of like, different mediums of art and different realities like the live action makes sense you're not going to see it suddenly in like i don't know a gta or no. uh or, or a ubisoft game because it just they they wouldn't do that it just feels weird and, yes. and something like that so yeah. it's cool that they've made it wholly like their identity which i yeah. think is really rad and quantum break was the was the start of that in many ways yeah it's also it's it's weird to me that I I wouldn't be surprised if one day may maybe it's a pipe dream but one day we do get a quantum break too, um because mm. the way it ends it's like okay if you've not played quantum break close your ears if you're gonna go you've had eight years you've had, you've had eight years but I feel like uh, the whole Wallen door uh, not Wallen door what's his name Martin Hatch in this game it feels like they're setting him up for a sequel. And Amazing how his name is also like another word for door. Yeah, just, no, but I, just putting I, it out there. Hundred, hundred percent. It has to be the same character. <laughs> it has whatever. to be intentional. Yeah. Um, but like you've played the story. It's a thing of this. Most of the game to talk about. Oh no, you get these creatures between time. They're called. I think they're called shifters. You know, they mm -hmm. they exist only in the brink, or whatever. And then you. you you sort of piece it like, oh, old Martin Hatch is one of those. There's a scene where you're like, oh my God, like he's clearly one of those things. And then mm. I think like surely the final chapter of this game, I'm going to fight Martin Hatch or something. And you just don't. You it yeah. just sort of ends. You don't, you don't learn more about him. You don't yeah. learn more about him. And the, the end scene is like, oh, okay. It's revealed that Jack's been sort of relaying his whole story to somebody at um, what they're called. Monarch. Monarch. Um, oh, oh, there's old Martin Hatch, very much alive, and you know, talking to Jack about like, hey, like, come work for us, or we can work together, whatever. You're like, okay, this is weird. Like, I wish they expand on this more. If only there were a sequel <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for them to do it. Maybe one day, I don't know. Isn't um, it? Isn't it interesting that? Um, I mean, I never saw him, but I saw him like maybe twice. But uh, Sean Ashmore obviously appears in Alan Wake 2 as a different yeah. character. Yeah. And there's the one moment where you meet him out in the courtyard and he's talking about Wall and Door and he specifically talks about him being a figure that lives outside of time. Yes. And has access to doors that let him move between time. And it's like, well, this is literally 100%. what Martin Hatch was described as. Yes. So that has to know. be. It's for, and it's, it's just so interesting because playing this game after Alan Wake 2 there are so many Alan Wake 2 easter eggs we're like whether I don't mm. think Remedy knew they'd get to make the sequel I mean I'm sure they plan to but like I think you you said to me like oh no it's Sam Lake has just said at the time it was just like easter eggs he had thoughts for the Alan Wake 2 mm. um, but there obviously eight years ago Alan Wake 2 wasn't being developed not, not that we're aware of but it's just so cool to see how those Easter eggs, you're like, oh, shit, that's, that actually happened. Or like one mm -hmm. thing that blows my mind is that throughout this game, um, you see AWE graffiti in numerous places and in, on an, one of the boards where they talk, there's somebody scribbled notes about Alan Wake. Somebody's written there like AWE, it's like Alan Wake something or Altered World Event question mark. I'm like, oh my God, that's Control. Like four years yeah, before Control came out, so yeah. it's it's just no. Been I, I think interesting seeing. I that think stuff. Sam Lake had had these like brand ideas of of how this is all piecing together, and over mm. time he's had to adapt. You know how they really do fit together based on like the reality of game development. Yeah. Um, I think the interview in question was one from this week or last week where they were talking about this sort of stuff, and um, yeah, he basically said that he had the idea for. Alan Wake's Alan, Alan Wake 2's like core structure already mm. before Quantum Break came out, like the idea of a cop working with Alex Casey, like mm. was already an idea he had, and that's like something that was still central to Alan Wake 2 that came out last year. It is yes. how it ended up working out. So I think at the time probably Quantum Break factored into that. It's just when yeah. 
it didn't work the same way and maybe there was some weird um deal stuff with microsoft he was like cool not going to include this because we don't mm. actually know how this is going to fit in in the future but they could change that later down the line i agree with who, you and i think it would be really cool yeah. who owns the ip does remedy still own quantum break uh, i want to say remedy does yeah i don't think microsoft gave two shits about this ip <laughs> uh, at the end of the day um but that being said i'm not entirely sure because if that was the case i don't know why it maybe wasn't um put out on playstation yeah um let me but, just see yeah intellectual property i don't know it doesn't really it doesn't i can't say. really say i will say yeah. what is hilarious it's always always fun to look back and you know uh, see how things shook out because i went to quantum breaks wiki page to just learn a bit more about you know the story and just the, the how the game was made and there's a paragraph there that says remedy pitched um an alan wake 2 sequel to microsoft and they went no oh yes yeah no thanks uh no. they want a new rp <laughs> <laughs> which which is just hilarious because like you can look back now i'm like oh like microsoft darned it fuck up like but alan wake 2 if it was released back then, it might have not hit the same way. Microsoft might have changed things. So it's it's unfair to be like, yeah, Microsoft, like, look, how could you do this? I mean, at the time, yeah. the strategy was TV inclusion, a game that brought TV elements to gameplay. Like, of course you would go for that. So, yeah, it, it's just funny to look back and be like, damn, there's an alternate timeline where Alan Wake 2 is a Microsoft exclusive and maybe by this point, we've got Alan Wake 3 and 4 <laughs> or something. Control and Quantum Break never happen. They don't exist. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. Long and the short for those that Quantum Break is definitely a – it's it's a dated game if you compare it to Control and, and Alan Wake 2. Um, but as a product of its time, I appreciate it for what, it's, for what it is, what it was, and I enjoyed playing it. Um, I'm glad I got to finally tick that one off my – my remedy list it's complete now I'm i think yeah. i think the only things i've missed now are it's the control dlc and i've played a little bit of alan wake alan wake's american nightmare i never finished it I'm like do i go back and play it eh, it's also know. like a roguelite mode of that it's not the greatest yeah. i honestly am not a huge i think fan I, rem- it, I, um, I played alan wake i loved it it's like oh my god there's an there's like a sequel dlc played as yeah. like this is just a completely different vibe and it it, it does yeah. it it feels completely different so yeah um i'm just reading here in july 2018 after announcing their new game this was control at the time uh, which starred one of quantum breaks actresses remedy ceo tara virtala said a sequel to quantum break is pending approval from microsoft which owns the intellectual property i quantum know break. Phil yeah. Spencer, please. So, RIP. <laughs> that is, in my view, exactly why it's not included it's, in the connected universe. Yeah. Yeah. They don't own it. They can't they include can't those actually. characters. Yeah. So they they're getting around it. Yeah. They're including characters that are definitely calling back to those mm. exact characters there. Uh, but yeah, the odds of a Quantum Break sequel, I think, are pretty Listen, to none at this we point. We didn't think we'd yeah. get an Alawake too. So. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. It took like. 13 Forever. years so who knows yeah who um, knows yeah but cool that's all nah, it's a, it's a good game like I, I i was just briefly looking through like you know wikipedia sort of sums up the critical response to it and like there's a lot of critique on the game's combat and platforming and this and that and granted i haven't played the game since 2016 um i remember reviewing it i distinctly remember the review embargo came out on the same day as my graduation at varsity. <laughs> so I was sitting there listening uh, to some God awful speech and refreshing my phone because I def you know, when you review something for embargo, yeah. no one, no one outside of this sort of no. uh, uh, industry knows, but it's kind of like nerve wracking because you're like, you don't want to have the same score as everyone. Cause that kind of defeats the purpose of critique. Like, being the average score is like kind of stupid. And I never mm. understood the idea of like, yeah, you nailed the, you got so close to the Metacritic score. Like that's mm. cool. Who cares? Um, but you also don't want to be this extreme outlier because yeah. you just invite all sorts of like 
negative attention from social media not from other critics i think other mm. critics completely understand that people have different views and things yeah just but like other people gamers. don't um, no uh so i'd give <laughs> i'd given quantum break a nine Nice. I thought it was fucking spectacular at the time. I just mm. really, really enjoyed it. And I remember when the reviews dropped and I started reading the first few and it was like six, six, <laughs> seven. And I was just like, I oh, know. Oh, fuck. What have I done? <laughs> I was just like, am I like, did I give this game a pass or did I like see stuff that others didn't or did others not? And I was just like, oh, no. Well, so shit. I actually went back and I, I did read your review and I think you nailed it. Like it's, Oh, thank it's, you. Uh, like I completely, and, and it's it's funny looking back at, at like an eight year thing of like, well, this is clearly innovative or whatever at the time. And I think you were fair of like, you know, the inclusion of TV, this, that, whatever. I don't know. It didn't strike me as like, oh, you just. I just found it. the game fucking fun. Like mm. I straight up probably enjoyed it more than others in that regard. And oh. especially at the time, it was to me like the first, thing on xbox one that was like wow this is yeah eye-poppingly beautiful you know mm. so yeah. also shout out to quantum break for uh including a very loose version of what we got in tears of the kingdoms rewind um because that exists in quantum break there are oh, certain right. certain environmental things that you have to rewind into place to like get across or whatever i would play it as like oh my god you're <laughs> right this is tears yeah. of the kingdom so shout huh. out to remedy for we're having that in the game. See, ages Rem ago. Remedy, Remedy aren't giving enough. It's just funny though, because especially after Quantum Break, when they announced Control, everyone was like, hmm, mm. Remedy, hmm, hmm. And then like Control put them back on track, I feel mm. like in such a gigantic way, even though it didn't sell super well. So that's a real yeah, which, which, games. which baffles me. Yeah. Control and Alan Wake yeah, 2 not man, selling like it's... tens of millions. I'm like, why? <laughs> I do feel Play like I do games. feel like they have their, their themselves to blame somewhat. Like mm. the marketing for Control was super confusing. I didn't really understand what sort of game that was mm. up until very close. Like some people were describing it as a roguelite, and then others were like, <laughs> "No, wait, it's not a roguelite. It's a Metroidvania." And it's like, like what is no, this? Yeah, what like, is going on? Yeah. So I don't yeah, know, weird. 